Hello, my name is Stephen Thomas, and this is another video out of my series on Azure Integration Services and Hybrid Options. In this video, today we're going to focus on some of the core features that make up Azure Logic Apps. These are features that everybody should know when you get started working with Logic Apps. Let's jump right in, and the first core feature I'd like to talk about is retry policies. Retry policies are actually set and configured per action inside your Logic App. So you can have different retry policies based on what that action is actually doing. You get automatic retries whenever there is a 408, a 429, any 500, or any other type of connectivity exception. In these cases, your action is going to automatically retry according to your retry policy set on that action. Of these, you'll probably run into the 429 retry. This happens when you call a Microsoft connector and it gets back a rate limit exception. In this case, you've made too many calls within that rate limit, and it'll wait for the configured amount of time and retry. You define the retry policy in ISO 8601 format. Here's what it looks like to set that retry policy on your action. Every action has a default retry policy. I believe it's set as incremental to go every 15 seconds and then goes up from there. You can define your retry policy as none, exponential, or have a fixed retry policy. The next feature that's very important is the run after. Run after can also be configured per action in your Logic App. You can use run action to modify the flow control inside your Logic App. Run after can be used to also configure a try catch setup inside your Logic App, and we'll see this in our, when we get to our demo. The four things you can configure for run after is is successful has timed out, is skipped, or has failed. There are different times you would set these on, on different actions based on what you want your logic to accomplish. Next is testing with static results. Sometimes you may be calling a API connector, but you don't want to actually make that connection. You want to simulate the results, and that's very easy to do. You can go to that action, go to the testing tab, and you can configure static results. Something else that's very useful and powerful inside Logic Apps is functions. Functions are small units of what it calls like function code that allows you to do simple tasks such as string manipulation, date manipulation, and other things like that. There are lots of built-in functions, I'd say over 100 or so, to accomplish a lot of things in your Logic Apps. Some of the things I've used functions for is casting in and out of base64 and other casting needs such as casting in and out of XML and in and out of JSON format. You can also use it for string manipulation, collection manipulation, logical functions, and a whole host of different things. The next core feature is the ability to define a JSON schema on some triggers. Such as the HTTP request trigger allows you to define a JSON schema for the inbound message. This way it will parse that inbound message and make all those properties available for you inside IntelliSense, just like it was another Logic App property. This could be very useful. Once you have defined that schema, you get full access to all of these properties. Content type. Content type is also important inside Logic Apps, especially when making inbound HTTP calls. Logic Apps has native support for many different types of content types, such as XML and JSON. There's a lot of times you have to cast and convert back and forth between different content types because some actions will natively support certain content types, such, such as some will want to be a JSON content type if you're dealing with JSON actions, for example. Debatching is also supported inside of Logic Apps. You can set a property called split on and then define either the JSON or the XML uh, expression you want to use to debatch that inbound request. So if you have a message that contains multiple people inside that message, for example, you could debatch that message at the person level and it'll create a new independent logic app for each of those people inside that message. Now split on it sometimes is exposed in the designer, uh, depending on if you're using standard versus consumption. And there's some other nuances with split on, but in general, it's a very good property very good feature that's there that you could use. There's also batching and debatching support inside of integration accounts. This is a very legacy feature that I don't see leveraged very often. Here's a few quick other tips that I want to point out. Make sure when you add a new action to your 
designer surface that you rename that action as soon as you add it. If you add a dependent action underneath it, it won't let you rename that action. So go ahead and rename it as soon as you add it. And once you add an action, make sure you fully configure it before you move on. Back in BizTalk world, I used to add a bunch of shapes to a orchestration designer. And then I would sometimes print out that shape, I'd save it, and then kind of work through it on paper. When you add an action to a logic app, you're not able to save that logic app until you fully configure that action. So make sure when you add that action, you fully configure it. You want to make sure you save often and make sure you always save before you switch over to the JSON code view. For each inside logic apps kind of behaves a little bit differently than you may believe. Um, you can be configured to actually run sequential, which is a traditional thinking for each is one at a time, or it can be also configured to run in parallel. So you could run 20 instances of your for each loop at a time if you may wish. So make sure you have that set based on your business needs. You also want to make sure to avoid using more than one Microsoft account and also make sure your Microsoft account is a work or school account. Years and years ago, I set everything up with my Hotmail and I continue to run into issues by using that Hotmail account. Now with that, let's jump into a demo. We're gonna take a look at retry policies, run after, functions, and JSON schemas. We're gonna jump into the Chrome browser and take a look at a demo. I've already logged into my Azure account. And I've already went ahead and created a couple standard edition logic apps. In this logic app, we're gonna simply receive an HTTP request, initialize a variable, do some stuff in our scope try block. When we get an error, come down here to a catch block, set a response, and then simply return that response. This response in the catch block simply says catch. This response here simply says that it was successful. So let's take a look at what we have set up here. First, we want to look at how we would set up our retry policies. In this case, this HTTP request is going to create a 404 error. In here, we could come in and go under settings and come down and look at our retry policy. This is actually going to follow our default retry policy, but if you remember from the slides, 404 will not trigger an automatic retry, and we'll change this to something else later to see what it looks like when it does. And I can select this dropdown, and I can select different options here. I can select a fixed interval and specify how many times in the seconds that I, uh, seconds or minutes between those calls that I want to have in that fixed interval. But for now, we'll go ahead and leave that at default. And let's go ahead and just run this and see what happens. And before we run this, let's see how I've set up the scope catch shape. This is simply just a scope shape that I've added. When you click on this, you again, you go under settings and they've now exposed the run after property very nicely here. You can have multiple items uh, configured in your run after. You would simply select actions. You can select any other actions here that you want to have tied to this uh, scope shape. I just have one and that's my try block. And in here I want to have, I don't care if it's successful, I don't want to run it in that case. I want to run it if it's timed out, skipped, or has failed. So that's the criteria for running this scope shape. In that case, I'll run all those actions that are contained in that scope shape. So let's jump over here to Postman real quick. I'm going to go ahead and make this request. It's going to make that call in and returns catch. So that means it's been hit inside of our catch block. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So we're going to jump over to overview and take a look at our last act, successful run that was right here. Now it did actually give an error, but since we handled that error here, it showed this logic app has ran as successful. So make sure you keep that in mind that because the logic app says it ran successful, if you have run after logic configured, it may not show up as an error run for that scenario. So in this case, sure enough, we got our 404, it ran zero seconds, and then jumped down here to our catch block and returned our response. So let's jump in and modify this process. Instead of 404, let's change this to a um, 429, which would be like the rate limit. And go ahead and save this. And let's go ahead and run this again. And I've went ahead and ran this again. And you can see it's sending the request and it's waiting for the response to come back. It's not coming back as quickly as we saw before. So let's go ahead and jump into this running logic app and see what's going on. I'm gonna go back up here and go to overview. And you can see here that we have a running instance of the logic app. 
and I'll dive back in there again and show you that it's still spinning on this error 429. That's because it has the default retry policy configured. So it's going to take it about a minute and a half or so. And then it'll eventually throw an error on this process and go ahead and run down to our catch block. In that amount of time, our request may or may not have timed out that we've made to this initial logic app. So this is really where you'd want to make sure you set your retry policies to correspond with the type of trigger. If it's a request response trigger or not, you might want to make sure you modify those retry policies. So now let's jump back into our designer. And let's take another look at some functions that we can set up. When we're inside our designer, I'm just going to click on my compose shape. And you go over here on the left and you see this FX. And this is how you get um, access to all your functions. We have functions and dynamic content, which is in this same selection window. And you can click see more over here on the right. And it's going to show you all the different types of functions available to you collection functions definitely used a lot and a logical conversion math functions uh, date and time functions of course reference functions uh, workflow functions and URI parsing functions and some additional manipulation functions so there's a lot of different functions you have here so a lot of different things in here to uh, do a lot of complex manipulation of data very useful in processing results they return from one of your other actions up above. So with that, let's jump over to one of our other workflows. This one I've created to show how we can assign a JSON schema on our inbound HTTP request. So I just have an HTTP request here, simple compose shape that really does nothing right now. And what I want to do is have a response. I'm going to add an action and add a response here and i want to return the response from this compose shape i'm going to go to my dynamic content and in this compose shape i have the pizza size is and then it's blank in this case i want to define an http schema here i've already done that by simply using a sample payload and i'm going to copy and paste in my sample payload from my postman message that i'm working on over here and you can see that I click done. In doing so, when I go to my compose shape, I will now have the pizza size is. I can come over here to dynamic content, and I have all the IntelliSense for the parsed uh, JSON scheme right here, just like that. So that should return my pizza size. So I'm going to jump back over into Postman. But what I want to do is go into headers, and I want to turn off the fact that I want to pass in the application JSON content type. So I'm going to go ahead and run this. And you can see here I got my response, but it says the pizza size is blank. I'm going to go ahead and click on content type, run that again, and now it says the pizza size is small. So without specifying the content type, the logic app didn't know that it was JSON, didn't know how to parse that message. So once I specified that content type, I was able to come in and specify and get that um, piece from the JSON message. Oh, one last thing I wanted to point out, I'm going to jump back over to my retry policy logic app, go back in the designer. And if I want to set those static results, uh, let's say down here on the 429, I can go under testing. I can say enable static results. I'm going to say success. And I want to have output defined. And I want to say uh, all OK. I'm going to go ahead and save that. So now if I was going to run this again via Postman, this time we would see it was successful. So in past results, uh, we'd had an error there, either a 404 or 429, that the 429, remember, hit the retry policy. This time, this time with the static results, went right through and came out successful. But you will note here that in that action, it does show this little science beaker bottle, I guess that is, to show you that you are using testing results there. So, so with that, this was a quick demo of some of the core Logic App features, and hopefully this uh, sparks your interest and want to jump in and try Logic Apps yourself. If you'd like to learn more, I have some more resources available to you. First off, you can go to my website at stephenwthomas.com learn. This will give a link to this video and all others in this series. 
And I also have links to my Pluralsight videos. Some of these videos are slightly outdated, but the content is still very relevant to Logic Apps today. So make sure you check them out. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe.